Welcome to Get Offset. My name is Emily. And I'm Joan of Heart. And uh, so there have been a couple of big gear things in the past few weeks. I finally got the Gold Foil Jazz Master. There's a demo of that up right now. But first, I think we should talk about something I sadly had to send back after I finished filming. Aww. The Strymon Cloudburst Ambient Reverb. So that kind of uh, took a lot of the internet. I think kind of by, it was leaked a few days early, but largely I think people were kind of surprised by yeah. it. Um, yeah. I, I was really surprised by it. And uh, one of the things I was surprised by is, why did it take you guys so long <laughs> to do this? Everyone's asked for like, what, a decade of just the cloud algorithm pedal? <laughs> My guess is they were still selling plenty of big sky for people yeah, who just exactly. wanted that algorithm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yep. I I wonder if they saw people like uh brands like eight uh Eventide and their dot nine series. Like the black hole. Yeah. yeah, literally exactly yep. that. Take the most popular algorithms from the H nine, which you famously could not use two effects at once, um, and give them their own standalone pedals with more intuitive controls. Yeah, I think it's a smart yeah. move. And to be honest, even that they improved upon it in some ways with the uh, Cloudburst, uh, doing a few things that for me, uh, when I had my Mel 9, I would pretty much use that in front of the Big Sky in order to get those kind of like orchestral strings or violin sounds. And the fact that they yeah. put that in this pedal as an added kind of algorithm that's apart from the Big Sky, it A, makes it accessible, and B, well... That's something Big Sky doesn't have. That's that's true. When people saw the ensemble feature, I saw some comments thinking that it would be like the choral, which which you've talked about that's, a little bit. That's what I, I kind of I kind of wished that they had the choral in there because that's one of my favorite you know presets in the Big Sky. But I understand. Let's you know it's fine. I mean, start somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, and I, my guess is if this sells as well as I suspect it will, they will continue to release mm. those algorithms. But it is in, it, I I was shocked at how how small it was. I thought it would be you know because the dot nine pedals, I, this has a few benefits over the even tied dot nine. Mm. Um, depending on like what you describe as a benefit, uh, the obvious benefit between them is there it's smaller it's um about the same width as a chase bliss pedal in a oh, wow. little shorter yes yeah, wow. it's, it's smaller than i thought it was going to be and i saw pictures of an advance for some reason i still thought it'd be close in size to like the iridium or the flint and it is in fact significantly smaller no, um, yeah, like that's you're telling me that, and of course, like I have, you know, who, whoever's watching, like this is typically the size of like an El Capistan or like mm -hmm. some of those smaller form factor pedals they have, but to that smaller, oh, that's great. Yeah, it really is. Um, what? Oh, yeah, and there aren't any secondary controls. The Eventide series, they all have those secondary controls, and I think that they need them. Hmm. But the Eventide dot nine, I'll. I mean. You can do presets with the the cloudburst too, but um, the, the you don't need a secondary switch or anything like that uh, with the dot nine series to access those presets. Both are fully MIDI com uh, c capable, and both uh, series are are stereo. the The cloudburst stereo was interesting to mm. me. I f like when it was more dry. I didn't like it in stereo as much. Um, yeah. But when you add more of that wet signal, that mix, that uh, fifty percent happens around two or three o'clock on that pedal. It sounded a lot better. It's just that the dry really is all on one side. I actually got a comment from a guy who just was like, "The dry is all on one side." I'm like, "Yeah, I, I mean, I said that in yeah. the video, but <laughs> thanks, thanks yeah. for pointing that out." That's historically, I think, even like on my big sky, I definitely noticed that on one side, the signal's a little bit louder than it is mm -hmm. on the other side. Um, but yeah, I mean that, you know, the more of the mix that you turn up, it balances out. But yeah, that's, yeah. Frankly, I, I kind I didn't, my demo's not in, in mono, my demo's in stereo. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of, I like it a lot in mono and I would probably use it in mono. But what I love about the stereo effect of how they did that um pedal was like the the trs and that i think is going to start playing really well with some certain strymon pedals because to get 
stereo in on the iridium, it's a Tierra mm. stereo in and a dual TS stereo out. So you just need mm. the one cable. You don't even need to buy a weird breakout cable. I have TRS. Yeah, the I have Y's. TRS patch cables everywhere. Oh God, I can't stand the Y cables. <laughs> like I, I, you know, I, I'm. It's great with the TRS. It's like a one, obviously, to go in. But oh my God, it has been a nightmare since I had the Gen Loss. I've had to reroute my whole board to continue the stereo, obviously, loop from before that point and then after it. And just those YTRS cables have been just the bane of my existence. So yes, finding mm-hmm. something that's simpler, I will enjoy with just a single cable. Yeah, the Y cables, they're, they're a little more expensive yeah. and you don't usually buy a pack of them at once. No. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I should at a point, but <laughs> and yeah, also the I, I patch are not long enough. Yeah, that's all. That's also sometimes true. Um, I have some pretty long ones myself, but I think it's a really good pedal. I think it's going to sell like hotcakes. Uh, I already got some comments from people who who bought one. That nice, video I had to resist. <laughs> <laughs> that video was um, my first, hopefully, of many. Uh, I was working with Vintage King. Mm-hmm. They are another e-retailer, and I have a, a former co-worker of mine moved over there nice. and uh, was really excited when he reached out for this one. I haven't had a Strymon launch since the Iridium. So it's been a minute, but I'm really... it. Yeah, it's hard to beat the numbers with with those videos. People get excited. Yeah. And it is. Just, in, just in general, it's... Uh, it's easier to get views on a video when you're part of a launch. Even if you're a day mm-hmm. or two late, you, you kind of miss out on um, on on some of that, some of that goodness. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. I got some really good feedback from that, and I'm I'm happy. I was pretty sad awesome. to have to send the pedal back, even though it's not yeah. something I would use a lot. Yeah, uh, I'm not a big yeah, Shimmer would... Reaver person, but it sounded really good, um, and the ensemble stuff was really really cool. That's cool. I mean, I saw in obviously all the videos I was watching to try to convince myself not to. <laughs> I, so far, I've been marked safe, but I know eventually mm-hmm. I maybe I'd get one used, obviously. Um, but I listened to some of the videos that compared both the Big Sky and also the Cloud Burst and some of their similar algorithms. I did like the fact, at least from what I heard from the videos, is that the Cloud Burst sound like it had a more present lower end and a little bit warmer as opposed to the big sky and some of their algorithms taking more of the highs being yeah. present. So I actually did like that in the cloud burst. So I was already like, well, if eventually I get, get one, they're like, Oh, like you'll, you okay. You can replace this, the, the big sky. I'm like, no, we'll stack <laughs> them. We will Stacking stack out. them. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> the power of more reverbs. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, I think people were pretty excited about the the ensemble feature. And yes. um, as for the low end, another thing that they did was they made it work better for smaller spaces. The goal was to make it possible for that to be somebody's only reverb pedal. And when I heard that, I was super skeptical. When I yeah. played, I'm like, yeah. You know, you can you can really tame this if you I don't that too. want that high shimmer all all the time. I, I think it's really versatile. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that Cyber Attack probably had the most interesting in-depth video um, of it. So check out Cyber Attack's demo. I highly recommend it. Nice. Yeah. yeah. But that wasn't the only demo I, I released in the past two weeks, although I really have only done two. The other one was I, the Goldfoil Jazz Master. Yes, so and, we were talking about. <laughs> yeah, I knew people would dig it, and you know it's getting some eyes. Someone actually used my affiliate link on Reverb, so if that was you, thank you. That thank was you. very – oh, sorry, Sweetwater affiliate link. That's <laughs> my favorite affiliate link. So I was really, really stoked to see that. But, like, obviously I still have – the guitar, um, though it will soon be in the hands of some friends. So look, I'll, I'll, I'll be sure to promote that when it happens. Nice. But yeah, it's a pretty good guitar, but honestly, it has the same fret issue, mm. of flat frets that I've experienced from other Fenders recently. That's my only real gripe about it, at least. Like the build yeah. quality overall seems really good i like the neck a lot uh the fret ends they're they're not bad at all it's kind of dry 
in the house. You like to keep houses dry in the winter, especially in Seattle. Otherwise, you get mold problems. Oof. So um, the frets on all my guitars are poking out a little bit more than usual. It has some kind of, it's, you know, I think it did a really good job doing what it was trying to do. I think the pickups sound good, but I'm still thinking about swatch, swapping out these uh, the neck and bridge mini humbuckers for actual like gold foil actual set pickups. gold foils, yeah. Because mm-hmm. I think I remember from the demo that you did, was it the bridge that you said that you were kind of having trouble bonding with? Was it the bridge one? Middle. Which one was it? Middle. Middle. Okay, middle. I, I, you know, I agree with Creston Lee on this one. I think middle pickups are really only good for getting the in between sounds. Like a middle on its own, I don't think ever sounds really good. And, you know, I, I, I know people love their Firebirds and their three mini humbucker guitars, but <laughs> I just don't really see the purpose in having a middle pickup on a, a guitar that has humbuckers already. I use the middle pickup because it bucks the hum from the other positions. And uh, mm-hmm. that's that's basically the big reason I do it, but. Yeah, at least on my uh, St. Vincent little mini humbuckers. You know, I love those. They have a distinct sound that's like Strat-like, but not. Um, but I think that's the only answer, it, it kind of moment of which I like those. Yeah. I, I'm i actually bonding with the pick guard a lot more. Yeah. I, I, I know when I uh, was getting my G&L refinished in gold, Steve Selvage from the Whole Steady told me to get a tort guard, and I... I said no, and I stand by that being a good choice. <laughs> but this this looks nice for some reason. I, I like this a lot more. No, the I think inlays, it plays well. Yeah, the inlays are more like the blocks that the Squires have, so they're not like the actual like period correct. Um, hmm. uh, not dots. They're obviously the squares on uh, like the American Vintage Two Series has the period correct inlays, and this doesn't. But it's fine. But now you also know that they can do that. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, you know that they didn't. But yeah, I actually kind of had fewer complaints about this guitar as far as fit and finish went. Um, There was a little bit of schmutz, kind of looks like dried glue higher up the fretboard. And uh, the fretboard is dry, but like every beef I had was with the fretboard, which is not (laughs) what you... It's not ideal, but at least it's fixable. Yeah, exactly. That's the silver lining, at least, if that's... The only thing pretty much that you're encountering, which was a problem. Yeah, that's that's fine. It's fixable. Yeah, and it's a, it's a handsome guitar. So uh, thanks. Thanks again to Fender for entrusting it with me. <laughs> Thank you, Fender. <laughs> Thank you, Fender. Uh, lots of great guitars out there under $1,500 these days, but that's still, that still feels expensive, frankly, <laughs> uh, yeah. for anything. Yeah, that's what I said, at least for the most part, like even when I got my uh, Ampro 2, like, yeah, that, at, even at the time that I got it, like, yeah, that was that was a lot. And of course, seeing how the prices are going up for most guitars these days, it's just most like things. Oof. Yeah, most yeah. things in general. The thing about prices is they don't usually go down. Ever. Um, you might see that in like stuff in grocery stores and gas prices can obviously fluctuate for the most part. Hmm. These are these are going to be the prices of things, guys. Yeah, there's not uh, there's not really yeah. going to be rolling back once they roll forward. <laughs> I also do want to point out that eggs have been underpriced for a very long time. Like, <laughs> so I know like eggs are really expensive right now, even, yeah. but they've also been underpriced for a really long time. Um, that being said, I wouldn't pay twelve dollars for eggs. <laughs> Yeah, I have a, I have a, we have a few friends that ended up moving, I guess, more northern of Florida, and they actually, before all this happened, built their own chicken coops and have chickens, like, sometime during, like, the, you know, the last couple of years, and I was just like, so, uh, how do you feel now of being, like, ahead of everyone else, is having your own egg source? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. I bet they feel fucking great. Just double check yep. the time, like, uh let's make sure uh yeah you know we just need to be nicer to each other about things I life's agree. expensive <laughs> yes and yes it is it's like it's like shockingly expensive but um yeah let me think what else? 
I was gonna say something else about the guitar. Oh yeah, one 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 comment I I saw a few times about that the Goldfoil Jazz Master is that um, some people wish it had like a blade style switching system instead of the on and off for each pickup, and I really disagree hmm. with that. I don't think I don't think a five way switch is very conducive to offsets. I like that they kept it the way like did that instead of making yeah. it even more of a Frankenstein guitar. But uh I, I, I get the opinion a five way switch is definitely easier to use and yeah. makes more sense. We're used we're used to the blade switching. Um and I when I was starting to film my Cloudburst demo I panicked because I thought the pedal didn't work. Ooh. It turns out I just had all the pickups on that guitar off. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like full panic. And then I looked and I'm like, oh, I did the thing. I told people to not <laughs> do. To not do. I'm like, if you don't have any output. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. For yeah, sure. I did that. I did that today. I was uh, basically recording some stuff for my demo, and I had the calamity drive that I put back on the board. But at one point, I was like, "Wow!" When I turn on the calamity drive, like the signal just dies. Like, what's going on? Is it the cables? Let me unplug them. Let me see what's going. On. I'm going to connect it to another power source, and then like I look around, and I go, "The volume knob is all the way down." I'm an idiot. <laughs> Yeah, that's it's like sometimes you're like it's it's broken. Simple is the right yeah. And the cables are plugged in the wrong direction. Yes. We've all I've done, done it. Too. I've, yes. Like, like I've played guitars and pedals and derp, derp. for how long? And every once in a while <laughs> yes. I forget that it's, you read it like it's like the Torah. Yep. You start from right to left. Does it make sense? Not to me, but I guess it like they did it for a reason. I'd love to know that reason. Let us know the reason in the comments if there is one. If there isn't <laughs> one, let us know in the comments. Chime in. <laughs> chime in. Please do. Yeah, it's uh it's been a busy, busy couple weeks in, in terms of demos, and uh it's not slowing down anytime soon, so I'm glad enough for that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, what about you? What's new with you, dude? I've um, just pretty much been working again, basically on the sound examples of the marshmallow pedal that I've been doing. Um, from there, I'm just going to record the um, voice of the character next after I'm done with that. And uh, apart from that, you know, I've had some experiences with some pedals that I am happy to have. Like, obviously, I mentioned the Black Math. I actually sent that one back and I got a different color. So I'm really happy about getting one that's more purple in color oh nice they had oh. different yes yeah so i was asking yeah. i was like you know i was asking alec i was like is that more like a prince color or is that like you know kind of like a bluish purple and he's like oh no it's like a chameleon i'll show you and he was nice enough to take some like footage of it and yeah it, it shifts so i was like yes that one <laughs> I, I will get that one for sure so i'm excited to it's probably going to be arriving tomorrow. I really, really, really did enjoy the time I had um, with that um, fuzz pedal, and I'm really, I'm really, really picky about yeah. fuzzes. Like I don't stress enough that I am. I'm usually like a rat distortion. I think the calamity is like the first drive that I have ever had an overdrive that I have literally liked right off the bat. Um, and Dan did just great work with that. I was finally able to get one. I don't think we admit we did talk about us. So yeah, that was the new thing. I finally got yeah. Dan's calamity drive, you know, nice. and then we talked to him and I was like, it's on my list. I promise. So like, you know, um, last month I was like, okay, the time is here. I am fulfilling my promise because <laughs> they made another batch. So yeah, as soon Good. as I, yeah, as soon as I plugged it in from the first note, from the first chord, and I was like, yes, like this is so good and yeah, yeah overdrives too were like a picky thing for me um so oh that... i think that's where it's easiest to be pick it picky yeah. is the drive section like so there, fuzzes have such a wide range not that other mm -hmm. effects don't no, of course but it like and then a drive if it's not just right if it doesn't work just right with your amp and your setup it's going to throw the whole thing out of balance no exactly and the fact that it has a bleed it has the drive signal and then it has like a more bleed so more of your drive signal comes out on the switches um really great and of course goose uh is kind of like the boost to kind of drive it like a dirty amp uh for mm -hmm. breakup 
really sounds great. And of course, you know, in Untitled Goose Game, you know I had to, <laughs> you know, I was like, yeah, I'm going to goose it. <laughs> yeah. If y'all haven't played Untitled Goose Game, <laughs> yes. it's like, it's like, like less than 20 bucks. And it's just it. so, it's not, it's like the most wholesome chaos. Yes. <laughs> it's like your goose running, like trying to steal gardening tools. And- yeah, you're. Yeah, you're you're And honestly, <laughs> I was like so impressed with the payoff at the end too. I I did not predict that, could not have predicted that, and I just thought the ending was it was really perfect and made me so happy. Yeah, I really I really loved my time with that game. It was just like, "Oh, I get to chase children?" Yes. yes. <laughs> like get I to get terrorize to kids. steal things. Yes. I was like, yes. normally when I play video games, like I like open world games and things oh, like me too, that. Normally. Uh and yeah, when any of them are kind of like have a point system of how good you are and how bad you are. <laughs> like in Red Dead Redemption when I play that game, yeah, like Carlos always teases me because like I am the most horrible person when i play those games like no moral compass whatsoever <laughs> i was like overrated I'm a really, I, yeah, exactly overrated my daily life games. yeah in my daily life oh. i'm a relatively good person but you know video games beware npcs i've got it out for you <laughs> it's it's so funny that i do feel like the moral panic about video games leading to yeah violence. yeah that was it's overblown kind of, that's kind of, every moral panic yeah. is overblown <laughs> are you in the middle of a moral panic here are 10 signs like there's so like uh, this so before we segue into the next thing <laughs> yeah. I do wanna, I, which involves a moral panic um i'd like to implore you to subscribe to this podcast if you're enjoying it you can like you can comment you can subscribe on youtube you can subscribe on Spotify and mm-hmm. Apple Podcasts. You can also leave a review on Apple Podcasts. We love those. Yes, we love uh, those. I love a review. I I remember reading the reviews from the Pedal movie and playing a game like which these all the reviews were by angry men. All the negative <laughs> ones were by angry men who were like offended that women got a ten minute segment in the middle of oh a very God. long documentary. There's more important things to be upset about. <laughs> I, I, dude, you saw, so the other day on, on YouTube, I get a comment from a very old video, uh, mm. where he, he said, so I should stop sticking my tongue out in videos. He's like, it's, he's called it trashy and low class. And, uh, I, thought, I, I said no. And then put out, put in a tongue out emoji and I said, <laughs> find something more important to worry about. Like. If that is like your level of like worry in the world, oh, no. <laughs> figure figure it out, man. There's yeah, so much more to worry about. Out. Like there what mess things are you in the yeah. world? Yeah, there are more worse things. things that can attract your attention that can actually make a difference in the world. Like I don't know, uh, poverty, <laughs> hungry <laughs> children, fighting oh. moral panic. So, um, yeah, we also, you can super chat us if you're watching in the premiere, if you're not watching the premiere, but wish you that you were, um, comment, uh, subscribe on YouTube and click the bell icon to get notifications, uh, whenever YouTube feels like you need to be notifi- notified, which will not be every time probably. And will not be <laughs> timely. Let's be honest. Um, yeah. We also have merch at at podcast.com yes. slash shop like this yes. shirt that yeah, I've worn. I need to get yep. a new one. Yeah, that that's that's the tried and true. Uh, was it the tank top, right? This is the tank top. Yeah, I think I might move the logo a little bit higher, but I don't think they like it when you do that. Um, the other thing that I really like uh, was the what it got the for fuzz sake is always my favorite like hat and like any of those stuff that I bought it and then someone stole it named Carlos and I never got that hat back. So everyone gives him compliments on the hat and I always give him the side. I was like, that's my fucking hat. <laughs> you stole my hat. <laughs> nice. So yeah, you will probably get compliments if you buy that hat specifically that says for fuzz sakes. <laughs> you will get compliments. I promise you. Yes. I sent so Ben from Dwarfcraft Devices, he saw I, I made this shirt with me making a kind of a dumb. Oh yes, face I saw that. Video. It's amazing. 
if if, if you want to buy one, I'll like message me. I'll send you a one time coupon code for it. But I I I listen to them at fifty dollars because I don't actually want people to buy it. But I sent him one, and uh, I like I, I dropped in a a, a a beanie as well for, for fuzz sake beanie. And he posted a picture with it, and someone commented. Like, where can I get that hat? And I yeah. had to turn on international shipping for this person. So we now have that. Don't. Woo-hoo. Yes. Sorry uh, for our audience abroad. Uh, I've got you now. I thought it was on the whole time. I just Aww. thought I just thought Europeans and Brits didn't They're like the... me. Aww. Yeah, I had to for my merchandise for the Pedal Playhouse thing. Someone specifically asked me, like, "Hey, you know, I'm in the UK. Like, can can you ship this way?" And I'm like, "I didn't know that I had to set that up. Hold on, let me go look." And then, of course, once I did, I was like, "Oh no, all fixed. You can do it now." <laughs> yeah, I I thought it was kind of automatic, but yeah, apparently it wasn't. So similar, mm-hmm. same same instance. <laughs> yeah. Um. Buy it. People will compliment you. They really will. Pretty much everywhere. Yes. <laughs> For fuzz sake. It's funny. That was. I, I love uh, that. Andrew was very funny when he did that. He was. But uh, we were talking about moral panics and cursing. <laughs> be considered a moral panic, but it usually isn't. Um. <laughs> did you watch the Grammys last night? I watched some of it. Yeah, I I love I unashamedly <laughs> love the Grammys. I love watching award shows. It keeps me, uh, I think, in touch with a lot of things that I'm not naturally exposed to, and I think that's really important for musician and music fans to, you know, pay attention to what's going on. Um, I never I didn't grow up really loving pop music, but I I quite like a lot of what's um out today. So I watched it, but. <laughs> wouldn't be the grammys without some uh fiery performances including yep. one where sam smith and kim patras seem to be in hell and he has devil horns and he's singing a song called unholy which i you know i figured most people would get like the song's called unholy so the performance is going to be all like yeah <laughs> it's unholy. going to be in line with that of course and of course people are calling it like satanic and ted cruz <laughs> called it evil uh, to which I respond, oh. I respond to that tweet uh, uh, just simply with "nerd." That's some mm-hmm. dork ass shit. Like <laughs> you can, you don't, have to, you don't have to like it. But evil is not like a, a performance at the Grammys of a pop song that people, for the record, I don't think has an enormous amount of staying power. I think it's a really no. catchy song, but I think it's, it's really catchy. repetitive. Yeah. I think it's repetitive. It I wouldn't call it. It has a hook. Boring. Yeah. But it's really repetitive, and I just don't know if that's going to be, like, the staying power. I mean, they could just say that they don't like trans people, and they don't like that there's a trans woman woman in it winning one, one of the few trans women to ever win a Grammy up there with uh, Wendy Carlos and at least one other person who I'm going to remember as soon as I – Afterwards. Yeah, that's, that's yes. usually how it happens. Me too. <laughs> so um, – <laughs> but it's it's – it's interesting the Gram the Grammys, you know, they still got it. They still- <laughs> is what I just kept thinking when I saw all of the evil discourse today. But that's definitely <laughs> like some moral panic shit. Oh my like God. remember the Appar- satanic panic? Yes. Yes. I yes. yes. Uh apparently none of these people have ever gone to a ghost show or a ritual <laughs> per se. Uh, because that is, well, that would really be something to be uh panicking about panicking about no but the original satanic moral panic uh which is i think the one of the more famous ones from the 80s mm. is like satanists are literally going to come and like eat your kids they're going to hurt your children <laughs> so many moral panics center around the safety of they children they don't sugarcoat that <laughs> No, I was I was trying to put that in a mu- much nicer way. Basically there was it started because there was this daycare and uh it just I re- I highly recommend reading up on the satanic panic because it's really interesting because it just went away. <laughs> People just stopped talking about it because they realized that satanists aren't doing these things. No, they're not. I mean, satanists they're they're like cleaning parks. <laughs> And and buying like like what volunteering to clean the side of the road and stuff like yeah they're they're not anything like 
how the Bible describes them. It's well, they also don't really worship Satan. It's just no, <laughs> they don't. It's just kind of a name. But uh, so that was that was I think probably the most talked about performance from the Grammys. Oh, of course, but there were a lot. Um, in obviously the historic moment. Like Brandy Carlisle did a showstopper. Like, oh, yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, that, woman. that performance. Oh my god. Yeah, so so good. And then Chris Stapleton performed with Stevie Wonder. That was yes. pretty cool. I love but that. During, I did too. But during during Chris's guitar solo, which was I thought really nice and t- tasteful, hmm. Stevie was doing like a competing thing, and I was like, they yeah. should have picked one or the other. Oh, and, yeah. And I hate they to say it, wanted- I think they should have. They should have picked Chris's. <laughs> No, they were jamming. It was fun. And yeah. you're not going to, you can't top Stevie Yeah, when Wonder, someone but... feels it, yeah, exactly. You're just going to mm-hmm. let them do it. <laughs> I just didn't like the sound of the little sample pad that uh, Stevie was playing. It was uh, kind of the big you, yeah. thing. But it was part of a tribute to uh, Motown, Barry Gordy, and, uh, oh, my Lord. Uh, Smokey Robinson. Oh, no. Smokey Robinson. Oh, my gosh. I'm like, what is wrong with <laughs> me? Smokey <laughs> Robinson. <laughs> He still it was looks a tribute great. To them. He still looks the same, man. He's looked the same for 20 years. Stevie sounds great, too. Stevie yeah. still hit a lot of those high notes. Like, that's a man who took care of his voice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, what else was cool? Steve Lacey performed Bad Habit, which I think is a really good song. I think he's a really exciting performer, and I can't wait to see more, more of Steve Lacey. I'm trying to, like, think of, like, the guitar stuff. There wasn't a like a lack of guitar based music yeah i mean again i think again it was more the highlight of like hip-hop r&b at -hmm. least for this one because of the celebration of 50 years yeah there's so i think there's something with nam involving this too but we're celebrating 50 years of hip-hop this year and that's really exciting uh it's it seems like it shouldn't be that long ago like i have to put in 20 22 minus 50 and then just think okay 2023 it's 2023 yeah it is so. <laughs> we've only been a month into it it's all right we're still adjusting <laughs> i do i mean too. i i have to I say i believe yeah and i'm not hugely uh i don't have a huge knowledge of the earliest years of hip-hop so that's kind of i didn't know it was 50 i just thought we still had a couple years yeah i didn't the, the i year. didn't yeah i didn't either i mean my kind of uh, knowledge of any hip hop kind of starts, I guess, with the late 80s and then through the 90s and like early aughts, you know, like that's kind of my span. But the what was before, yeah, I'm not familiar with what was before any of that, like the 70s yeah. or I guess it was the experimentation had started then and then Cool mm-hmm. Herc in 1973 in August of uh, 1973, there was an event where people just are like, he created it that day and i think that's really cool to be able to pen things like that but i i would think that most people think about hip-hop starting with um rappers delight but it it makes so much sense to me that hip-hop would be significantly older than um (laughs) rappers delight which came out in 1980 because it's not just going to like be invented and then become popular like that was just the first that was just the first hit yeah but the genre itself much older and that's i i I would like to read and learn more about that i'll i watched something i think i think it was like last month and i'll i'll find it again and i'll probably post it in our discord which is great if you join discord you get these after the episode sometimes little uh behind the conversations that we have here um i watched on youtube a hip-hop through the on the east coast through the history so they went through all the different Mm -hmm. like groups and everything how it kind of translated over the years and I thought it was really interesting from what I heard as it gone through the 80s and 90s and of course to today um East Coast has a very distinct rapping style and it didn't change much even throughout through the decades it was all very similar but very distinct and I when I listened to hip-hop or rap when I was growing up apart from you know rock or whatever um I very much like the West Coast you know side of things and of course I liked some of the East Coast of the notable you know rap artists that would um but yeah very distinct style for East Coast rappers and I really did appreciate hearing that even though the torch kept being passed 
from the generations, there was some element of the way that their bars or the way that they actually carried the melody in their voice, it was still very similar or a callback to what was before. So I always thought that was interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, it's it's obvious when you listen to it, I think as an adult, mm -hmm. I think those things are a little bit harder to pick up as, as a kid, but they were just, they were very different. Um, I think that we we mostly know the difference colloquially, like as I as at least as white people, uh, from the West Coast versus East Coast stuff in the '90s mm -hmm. that got really really nasty, mm -hmm. um, but not so much about the actual differences within the genre. And I, I like a lot of genres do, or at least used to have more regional differences. Yeah, like it's literally called Bakersfield Country, which was. Uh, a response to the overproduced Nashville sound. So that was a hub. Obviously, Seattle had a sound of rock that was so different that it was given a name that encompassed a, a lot of stuff without much connection, except that they were from the same city yeah. kind of stuff. Like, uh, yeah, it's always kind of interesting to to learn new things. And that's one thing I really like about the Grammys is I'm kind of kind of forced to learn new things. Um, new things, yeah. yeah. Force is a hard word to say. No, I mean, yeah. you're just being exposed to new stuff. You're like, oh, exposure. I've never heard this before. I like Sometimes this. Sometimes exposure. I want to hear more. Good. Yeah. Exposure is not always bad. It's a bad when it's a notification on your phone that says exposure alert. <laughs> It's not, so you can die of many kinds of exposure. Exposure is <laughs> bad when it's what you're getting paid in. Uh, exposure is good when it's to interesting things that can widen your horizon. Um, and that's that's something about the Grammys. Like it opened with Bad Bunny, and I don't listen to reggaeton, reggaeton music reggaeton. very much. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna say it in that accent because that feels so right. It's, it's all right. I'll, I'll do it for you. <laughs> I'm in the region. <laughs> You're in the region. You, you've heard the word. It's a word I didn't hear. Said it's very prevalent. Very yeah, exactly. That was, that was really cool to see, see that whole performance. Um, because again, just not something you might listen to and getting the, the, the introduction that way, it's going to probably be the most palatable thing, way to get exposed to new kinds of music. Um, going back to the hip hop thing, though, did you were you able to watch through to the enormous medley for the hip hop celebration? Man, uh, I still yeah, I still needed so to get that. I saw highlights, but not like yeah. the actual. Yeah, I need when to. salt when salt and pepper came out. I I lost my shit. Like <laughs> I love, I'm sure I love too. salt and pepper <laughs> yes. so much. I do too. I I love doing shoop at karaoke. People are <laughs> yes. surprised that I do know all the words of that song so that was that was really fun that was a really fun thing nice. to see i look forward to it there's so much energy and positivity and then lizzo won record of the year she's the first black woman to win that award since whitney houston won it for i will always love you over 20 years it's probably Incredible. close to 20 years yeah it's and about then her, damn time <laughs> about damn time uh it's, apparently it's a uh, thick 30 but <laughs> it was lizzo i love so much and yeah. catch her performance if you can it was kind of later in the night um but it was you can tell she's been working on her voice she's never been a weak singer in my eyes but mm. she has really hit a new level with that and uh, for people who complain there's not guitar and pop music many of lizzo's songs have guitar including some shreddy solos you're just not listening to the right music to have <laughs> guitars in it. That's that's why exposure is good. Exposure, exposure to more music. Good. You know, I'm going to do a separate video about this, but it's just like the way guitar is used in pop music has yeah. changed. Um, it is not distorted guitar, fuzzy guitar forward anymore for the most not part. Not as much, no. You'll see people doing it sometimes like Olivia Rodrigo, Gale. Like, there's heavy guitar in that stuff. But even Coldplay, a rock band with a full-time guitarist, like, I listened to that song they did with BTS so many times because my niece was really into it for a while. Uh -huh. It's not a lot of guitar in it. 
it's plucky it's textural it's it's almost more more of a risk what i hear these days yeah yeah the same with uh i feel like it's either now rogers inspired like a little plucky guitar or acoustic guitar is still pretty Hmm. prominent in certain kinds of pop music but it's just different instruments evolve you don't hear as many saxophones in pop music now either no no you don't it's a damn shame <laughs> so I thought I really liked Lizzo's speech. I was actually kind of tearing up for her a little bit. Yes, I she did. Thanked, I did too. She thanked Prince. She dedicated it to Prince. She said that when Prince died, she wanted decided to commit her life to making positive music. And I loved that, man. It's and it's so hard to be a positive person. People it just is. want to bring you down. The more you exude or, that positivity, the more exactly. people want to fucking destroy you. Yeah, exactly. They'll obviously think you're a doormat. They'll try to use you. And then, of course, like, that's unfortunate. I mean, the what I really loved about when she was saying her speech, besides obviously the mention of Prince, um, she also, in talking uh, about positivity in music, um, she said this was a time when positive music wasn't mainstream at one point. I felt really understood, but I stayed true to myself because I wanted to make the world a better place. So I had to be that change to make the world a better place. I like to believe not only can people do good, but we are good. We are inherently. So for me, and what I like to usually tell people is be the good you wish to see in the world. And it really is. You are what change there is. If there's a negative world out there, be the counter. I mean, it's harder yeah. to be a good person, to be honest. It's easy to be a bad person. It is so damn easy. Um, so it's, easy. It's, it's a lot easier to be mean. It is. It's so easy. It's it's lazy. <laughs> but yes, yeah. like it's it's hard to be a good person and to be positive no matter what life throws at you. I mean, that is mm-hmm. the courage, that is the perseverance of character in yeah. being kind. Yeah, I think that we don't uh, I, I love a sad song, you know, but yeah, I do too. <laughs> but uh, the, the positivity in her music is beyond even just like a feel good song. It's all very much love yourself music. And exactly. it pretty much always has been since Good as Hell mm-hmm. uh, in 2016 to like special. Like, I think Lizzo's message to people is just like, love yourself the way that I love you. And it's hard to love people. And I think like there are religions, obviously, where this is like the tenant that they preach is to love everybody. Mm -hmm. And I think that shows how hard it is because it's so easy to find examples of people who preach that philosophy being cruel. Yeah. And this ties back to the Sam Smith um, unholy performance, Mm -hmm. because what what people don't realize, they're like, they say things like these artists take whatever chance they have to insult Christianity. And I'm like, look in a mirror, look back like 10 years in their lives growing up and being told that they were bad, that they were unnatural. They were going to hell just for being who they were. Why would they want to support this? Like, religion that has seemingly to to them and to a lot of people who've witnessed it um done everything in their power to make them just hate themselves um so i think that taking that back and that's just something that people do and it's something that everyone does they take back the things that have been used to hurt them and it's such a it's a it's healing there's something healing about it and i think that people don't realize that that's what it is they think it's just aggressive when it's truthfully defensive yeah and that reminds me a little bit again in talking about love and hate and of course when you think about religion and things like that um we want to still bring it into the lines of pop and music that at its time was kind of addressing that as a way is uh black eyed peas where is the love (laughs) like you know that is a throwback but it's yeah, yeah like where is it I mean, and you practice what and, you preach. Like, where and is that it? song did not uh, prepare us for <laughs> what Black Eyed Peas would become. Eventually, yes, become. Did you see that viral TikTok where uh, 
it was somebody like uh like acting like the black eyed key, key, keys listening back to the um non explicit recording of it, the safe recording. And they're like, This is better. Why didn't we do just this the first time in the comments? <laughs> the first the top comment is, wait, this is the this is the the uh like radio edited, friendly version, edited, What's the edited version? version, and then the the then they immediately like two minutes later like what the fuck why would they do that? <laughs> if you've never heard the original uh version of Let's Get Started, uh, don't. <laughs> Just continue avoiding it. Uh, you'll feel better. Oh god, yes, yes. The things that we cringe on later. I think it was pretty cringy then. To be it honest, was because that was that was. Uh, spoiler it's the, it's the word that we don't use anymore it starts with an r yeah uh, a slur um and even then like i know that by like 2003 we were not saying that word anymore and it's like the easiest slur to take out of your like vocabulary because if you start that r just pivot to the word ridiculous <laughs> oh, God. it's the easiest it's the easiest one. And honestly, if like 13 year olds can figure it out, grown ass adults should too. <laughs> you know, yeah. even even Lizzo, she had a word in one of her songs that's quite yes, an offensive word that. in the UK. And everyone, I remember everyone was like giving her shit for not saying anything. And then like two days later, she turned around a complete, like a new version yeah, that didn't it. have the word in it. And like, well, we can see why she was not responding because she was too busy fixing the fucking problem <laughs> yeah i have encountered musicians that um have not done a good job of that um and i've watched the situation unfold as the fan base pretty much turned into um ravenous <laughs> uh trolls as in i'm guessing on you don't want to I'm guessing you don't want to say oh. Amanda Palmer's name for some reason. Yeah, no, I was getting, I was getting to that, but yeah, I watched that whole thing unfold. I was like, you just change the word, just redo it, or just like say that you're never going to say that or change it. And there was just like a way in which she handled things that were so like immature for someone their age that was just like. I still appreciate your music and obviously what I've learned from some of the things that you've said as far as perspectives, musicianships, and how to treat people and connect with people and everything, but I can't support your behavior. So yeah, I kind of, at that point, distanced myself. It was just like, I appreciate some of your work, but I can't keep continuing supporting you if this is kind of the response yeah. you have to moments that are teachable moments if you don't have the grace to go in stride much like Lizzo did and make that change mm -hmm. rather than imploding. That's because it's hard. It's easier to be defensive and it we is. all experience of that, my, myself included. I've had and moments. I'm not, yeah, see, I'm not a saint. It's, <laughs> it's easier to yeah. do the cruel thing than mm -hmm. to reach across to someone who's hurt you and or you think has hurt you and like fix it like for example yeah i mean like, if, really if you're if you're friends i mean you talk it out you know what i mean and try yeah. to resolve things um and you just yeah. yeah just i just don't think a lot of times uh people make mature choices and it's unfortunate um uh, yeah, yeah we need how... to do better and the thing is like i just don't think it's that hard to apologize for hurting someone no. but apparently it's really really hard um and sometimes people aren't even given the opportunity to do so and that's worse but speaking of people like like that i i do want to talk about kim kim Petra, petros please uh, just, yeah you know i'm i'm really proud of her for breaking this barrier kim stop defending dr luke for fuck's sake Oof. she called <laughs> dr luke's team made doja cat delete tweets where she was talking about how he was overworking her and mm. then we all i think we, most of us know about the free kesha thing um yes won't get into that because i don't no. want to do the whole content no 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 thing. no no <laughs> kim called them liars and has been defending dr luke and it's one thing to yike. acknowledge that she is a we... word in one yike <laughs> yes that's a it's a big yike but it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a singular yike Yes. Um, it's one thing to, you know, acknowledge that 
pe- different people have different experiences with each other. Like I wish that we could all have consistent experiences with people, but the truth of the yeah. matter is like, I'm sure for me, there are people who have great experiences, interactions with me, and there are people who don't, and they don't like me for it. And yeah. that's, you know, that's just how it is. It doesn't make someone necessarily a bad person no. because for, for having that disbalance. We can't, of course. Like, we can try to be good and kind to everybody, but there's going to be like, things are going to fall through the cracks. Like Lizzo acts like, look at the Lizzo Postmates story. It's not great. It's just not. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, there's the balance. And but then say that someone's experiences, multiple people's experiences that they've had with someone are the, that they're liars for it. Mm, yeah, it's unacceptable. Not a good move. Yeah, yeah, I think really unacceptable. But she's she did a few. What else did she say? I don't care. Do you think that comes from a place of that's who you're working with? That's who an employer is there for to get more work. You have to defend them. Yeah, I'm sure, but. You don't have to defend them that much. You don't have to like no. <laughs> accuse people of being liars. You just have to no, like. No, of course. Going back to if, that moral compass yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> and if that's the case, that stinks. But I also. No, you just. Mm. Just say just just she didn't. Just call them liars. Yeah, I think <laughs> that's up. that's probably the really big issue of calling someone liars, uh, especially when there's probably enough evidence that. Yeah. probably proves the contrary um everyone's mm. entitled to their own opinions and i think sometimes in some cases when you don't know all obviously the details it's better to say nothing at all <laughs> yeah it's hard it's hard not to, it's hard to keep your mouth shut we have a podcast difficult things let's talk about the rock categories at the grammys oh oh yes yes we can talk about that because i was not happy with at least the metal category at all people (laughs) yo people talk about like the grammys being they complain about like the grammys being old and not new and that they, they say there's not great rock anymore or whatever well maybe it's because well brandy carlisle won for best rock performance i think that was a good choice justified um that was i think kind of a hard one i think turnstile would have been my second choice and i'm sure there are people who wouldn't think that brandy's rock but they can you know what they can do best metal performance ghost was nominated megadeth muse turnstile and ozzy osbourne so they're essentially three truly mostly contemporary bands muse is a legacy band for sure and ghost has been around for a long time uh like n- n- i wouldn't i'm not sure any of these are super duper baby bands and ozzy osbourne is a legend but uh did he mm. just win because he did something with tommy iomi i mean i listened to the patient uh was it patient nine when it came out the music video because he isn't really in them as much anymore mm-hmm. i did listen to that that was a relatively good song um i didn't hear the degradation rules but of the ones that are there i mean i get, i'm biased because you know obviously i love ghosts and that call me little sunshine is just such a fucking awesome riff in it mm. it was just like oh i mean i didn't expect yeah. them to win but it's still i mean it's uh, just, it's I, just I, ozzy I, it is just like uh there's there's other let someone else (laughs) i think this is what turns people off on award shows in general is that i mean i respect ozzy don't get me wrong yeah well no but do you think people get snuffed and snuffed and snuffed and then they get an award for something that's not maybe their best work because like they're like ah it's yeah we need to do this it's like but when are they gonna do that for beyonce i don't know yeah i don't i don't know i mean as far as yeah, as far as this goes, though, it was like the one thing was just like, but out of out of yeah. all of them, even if I want to say that Ghost really isn't metal, to be honest, um, some of the other ones that are there, I mean, probably could be a better example of the category. I mean, yeah. again, Ozzy is no longer, I think, touring anymore. He has obviously been having ailments um, yeah. with obviously comes with um, age. And again, I'm not being ageist, um, but. Again, like no, this isn't about ages. I don't. This is about like how awards. I just probably think, yeah, I I definitely think that thing. probably wasn't uh, the one for that category. Yeah. Um. No, I don't think so. He also won for best rock album. That's. Let me t- see. Yeah, and he there's won? patient number nine. Yeah, metal I mean, per- again, metal performance. Yeah, patient number rock nine. album. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. that was with 
um, the Black Keys, Elvis Costello. I don't think that should have won. I love Elvis no. Costello. Idols. And Lucifer on I, the I, Sofa I, from Spoon. I listened Spoon. to that album. That was a great yeah. album. Yeah. So Machine Gun Kelly shouldn't have been nominated, but <sighs> at least it didn't win. And then alternative, Chase, the band Chase Lounge, they're really exciting. They won. They beat Arctic Monkeys, Big Thief, Florence and the Machine, and the Yeah, Yeah, Yeah's featuring Perfume Genius. And yeah, that that alternative performance, again, King from Florence and the Machine was one of my favorite songs on that album. And so was, uh, what's that? I think it is I'm Free. That one was really great. But it was good mm-hmm. to see that Wet Leg, you know, became a winner, at least on the music performance. Yeah, because they're a young band. They're like, great. They are truly young. Great like, sound. Like, when we look at a lot of these bands, like, yeah, 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 it's been around since the yep. mid aughts so is Florence <laughs> and the Machine. Big Thief is relatively new. Them, yep. Yeah, Big Thief is relatively new compared to the Arctic Monkeys and the rest. They're all pretty modern bands. Uh, but mm-hmm. Wet Leg is literally the youngest of these bands, which is exciting. Yeah. And they also won for Best Alternative Album. They yep. beat Arcade Fire, Big Thief, Bjork, and the Bring Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. It's, again, the youngest band nominated by a lot um so I, at least we're seeing some of that because the truth is if we want to continue to see young rock bands we need to reward them yes. not just for existing but to acknowledge that what they're creating is actually maybe better than the like later career stuff that some of these other bands no, and that's not I... to say bands can't have excellent late career music I think that happens a lot. I think Wise Up Ghost by Elvis, Co- like Elvis Costello's album with the Roots, is phenomenal. I think it's one of the most exciting things in his whole catalog. I would have liked to have seen him win for that, but not for a boy named If. I mean, I, I like to hear people that are younger making music, even if half of it sounds like the older music, because again, it take, gives it a fresh perspective. It yeah. gives it kind of a new spin. And, you know, you'll have older generations listening to these younger generations making this music and falling in love with some of the music that is now because mm-hmm. it is a blend of both. Yeah. And all music is derivative to some yeah. mm-hmm. extent. And that's, fine <laughs> yeah this uh, you is know, fine <laughs> everything has influences um what i don't like is when music is so derivative but that it's or predictable ob- I guess, yeah it yeah. almost it almost gets the feel of like it almost feels more like karaoke oh you know. i get you yeah like, yeah <laughs> <laughs> that that's when i get kind of like I, I i i hope this is still like fine to say but i felt that way about saint paul and the broken bones i just didn't like it and, you know, it wasn't even that it was derivative. I just didn't like that he was always singing at that uh, screamy kind oh, of saying. Okay. Like, from like, Ugh. I just, if I found it um, orally exhausting. A- orally A-U-R. <laughs> exhausting. Yeah, for, for me, it's, it's interesting that you say uh, texturally the way he's saying was what bothered you. For me, and it comes to, like, metal music... Uh, or screamo or anything like I love the way metal guitars sound and all the harmonies and everything and the way they're mixed and just the tones they get but like the screaming and the like non-understanding like textural guttural like yeah I mean I would love to hear that guitars kind of taken back in the way that like James Dio would pretty much sing about fighting dragons and you know going (laughs) hunting for witches and stuff like that like that's kind of what I like and I understand that's not everyone but for me it was just like oh if I if I could just as far as and again it's a textual thing people have explained that to me so I understand like Mm -hmm. everything is valid it's just for me it's it it sounds like when you take like a pit bull under your arm and then make it go (laughs) (laughs) and i know there are bands that actually have a dog (laughs) as their singer oh my god yeah so it's yeah so it's 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 pretty funny but yeah i mean again all music is valid i just like certain aspects of like metal i've listened to some ambient metal was it is it um Oh, why can't I'll think about them afterwards? But there is some ambient metal music that I really do like too. Is it Opeth? I know they can sound kind of like ambient at times or acoustic, uh, acoustic kind of dark. But yeah, You're asking it, the there's right elements. Guy. I know, I know. There's elements of that genre that I do like, and then there mm. are the majority of this whole area of music which I'm kind of excluded from because I can't get past that 
textural or screaming or that kind of like growl that I can't understand the words because I want for when I listen to music I like to understand what people are saying I want to hear the message but hey maybe that message isn't for me and that's Mm -hmm. fine yeah it's always fine but it's It's fine fine. when things aren't aren't for you yeah Uh, I just scroll it's not for me scroll I don't need to write a comment (laughs) I just white people could say to themselves a little bit more before criticizing things it's okay for something not to be your your jam it's fine it's It's that's I said if it makes someone else happy and it hurts no one are there victims no does it make nope. you happy? Yeah? It's not a guilty pleasure then. The only pleasures you should feel guilty about are ones that harm other people. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't not don't need to get too political on this, but for just for example, I love Kesha. I think Kesha's awesome. Does it hurt anybody for me to like Kesha? No. So it's not a guilty pleasure. Mm-hmm. I hate it. Every once in a while, people will be like doing an icebreaker. It's like, what's your guilty pleasure? I'm like, I don't have any. Yeah. I don't, I've got no guilt. Somehow I sleep really well at night despite the anxiety. <laughs> Hard to explain, but my conscious, conscience is very clear as to, in terms of most things, and especially. The arts I like, and I think I think we got to call it. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, we're going to get on tangents. <laughs> we tricked you all into listening to commentary about the Grammy Awards. Yep. <laughs> You're welcome. They're on Paramount. Wait, are they on Paramount? Paramount, Paramount Plus. Plus. Yes. Honestly, watch them and just fast forward through the bits you don't like. It's kind of nice yeah no commercials kinda it was nice. great well again at first when you told me it was kind of like a, oh i don't i know i have it mostly internet i don't have cables she was like oh paramount plus i was like oh wait i have that i can watch it <laughs> mm. and otherwise it's on cbs so uh if you have an antenna which my antenna doesn't always work very well so i was really glad it was on paramount plus this year yes uh yeah you know. well everybody out there love you check out the subscription button Maybe press it until it says subscribed and then Tell stop pressing press it, it. <laughs> until it says subscribed and then stop pressing it. Uh, well, yeah, you know, everybody, uh, thanks for watching slash listening. Thanks for understanding. Until next time. My name is Emily. I'm Joan of Heart. Goodbye. Be seeing you. <laughs>